We're live. All right. Welcome, everybody, uh, to the Amherst Design Review Board meeting of November 18th, 2024. My name is Erica Zikas, and I'm the chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, and I'm calling this meeting to order at 5 p.m. The meeting is being recorded and will be made available via the Town of Amherst YouTube channel. Minutes are being taken. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021 and extended again by Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so via Zoom or by telephone. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. A hyperlink to the hearing is posted on the town's online calendar. Board members, I'll take roll call, and when I call your name, let us know you're here. Um, I see Karen Winter. Here. Pat Auth. Present. Karen Blum. Present. Uh, Lindsay Schnarr, not present, and Erica Zikos, present. Um, board members, if technical issues arrive, we may need to pause temporarily to fix the problem and then continue the meeting. If the discussion needs to pause, it will be noted in the minutes. Please use the raised hand function to ask a question and make a comment. I'll see your requests and call on you to speak. And after speaking, please remember to remute yourself. The general public comment item is open. We'll make it it's open to <laughs> items that are on and not on the agenda. Please be aware though the board will not respond to comments during the general public comment period. Public comment could also be heard at other times during the meeting when determined appropriate. Please indicate that you wish to make a comment by clicking the raised hand button when public comment is solicited. If you've joined the, uh, the Zoom meeting using a telephone, please indicate that you wish to make a comment by pressing star nine on your phone. When called on, please identify yourself by stating your full name and address and put yourself back into mute when finished speaking. Residents can express their views for up to three minutes or at the discretion of the chair. If the speaker does not comply with these guidelines or exceeds their allotted time, their participation will be discontinued from the meeting. Tonight's agenda includes the following. Um, general public comment period. And then we have uh, three proposals tonight, uh, DRB FY 2025-04 and 24-2, uh, 174 North Pleasant Street. Uh, we're revisiting Buttercup Bakery. Uh, item 05, 15A Prey Street, Jones Properties, and item 08, uh, 108 North Pleasant Street, the UMass store. Then we'll have approval of meeting minutes. We'll revisit our updates to the DRB standards and then any other business before adjourning. Um, is there any, oh, in Lindsay Schnarr, let's note that she's here. Hi, Lindsay. Um, shall we uh, hear public comment? If there are any members of the public who wish to share their thoughts tonight, let us know by raising your hand. And Jacinta will bring you into the meeting. We do not have any members of the public present for comment. Okay. All right, great. Onward to Buttercup Bakery. Welcome, Yusan. Hi there. So when we visited last, when you were here last month, we asked you to make some changes to uh, kind of clarify your intentions regarding the design of your sign and lighting and then any signage in the window. Yes. And this was the new design of the sign. And we did put the business hours and the LED open sign mockups. Hi. And then the new Buttercup Bakery sign up above. Correct. Okay. And then I saw an email that Jacinta shared with the members of the board that you are not going to do any lighting of the overhead lighting on the sign at this correct. time. Yeah, okay. correct. So the, the landlord actually, I think he, he had some of his um, maintenance crew come and they actually wrapped some like holiday lights around the window frame for, for the holiday season. 
Um, I actually took a photo of, give me one second. Find I think those kinds of um, decorations that are considered temporary don't yeah. have to come before us. So you're in the clear, you know, if okay. you want holiday lights or, or, you know, uh, twinkle lights in the windows that that's okay. Um, I figure I share just cause it was, it was done by the, the landlord. Yeah. So let's see here. Just trying to share that other picture. Are you able to see both pictures? Uh, just one at a time. Okay. We're on the one, the more recent one that has the, the lighting, the lighting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this is the current condition of, of the storefront right now. And then your the painting, the color yellow has been painted around the window frame and the door frame. That's your, that's what you're intending to keep? Yes. Okay. Yeah, that, that's new paint that she had painted. Okay. All right. So we see the new sign um, proposal here, the, the white background. Buttercup is kind of bigger. You've dispensed with the the oval, and you've introduced the flowers. Board members, any comments to share? Karen, please. Um, it's lovely what you've done with the sign and how you've changed it. The only thing I wonder about is when you ha have craft bakery, how difficult is it to see from the street? That is a good question. I haven't personally um, did a did an eye test from the street. Um, I'll have to I'll have to maybe ask my my cousin to kind of maybe take a picture from from where the road is. Um, it might be yeah the craft bakery as you mentioned might be kind of small, and the cursive writing is is a little bit on the slim side. It's not as bold as we probably should have made but I think yeah the buttercup part is probably what most people refer to the store going forward I would hope so yeah. when everyone mentions buttercup I would hope that they would just know oh it's the bakery <laughs> it's more like awesome. a, yeah it's more like a just a supplemental fine print underneath mm -hmm. may I ask a clarifying question here um mm -hmm. Before you presented a mock-up, is this installed? It has been installed, yes. Oh. Okay, so this <laughs> we're supposed to go for approval before installation. Yeah, so they because um, I was we were told about because we were um, told about like a temporary sign permit. I see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so this so. is you're open to making changes if necessary. Yeah, if we have to make any changes, I absolutely will mm -hmm. we'll do it. Um, Fair. So this okay. Is okay. If not, we will make some necessary changes. Great. Okay. Um, I see Pat's hand, and then Lindsay. Um, just a just a question. I I actually like the new sign. I think it's um, what we all discussed in vision together last month. Um, and it appears that you have a new storm door or screen door that's obscuring the yellow door. Are, is there intention to paint the woodwork of the screen door or the whatever door that is? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if, I'm trying to look at the old photos because I wasn't there before all the painting was done. So I wasn't sure if that screen door was replaced or, but she, yeah, she can probably, she'll probably print, uh, paint the frame yellow just to make it look more uniform. Yeah, I think, I think that would be a good idea. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's an easy task to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. And Lindsay? Yeah, I think this looks really great. Um, it's simple, but there's a fun pop of color. Um, I would just make two suggestions. I do think I agree with the yellow painting of the storm door, the wood frame. Um, I think just in terms of down the road, whenever you are able, it would be nice to 
change the hours to something that's a little cleaner, um, like a decal or just something that, because it's such a such an elegant kind of presentation, and then that sign just kind of detracts from it. Got it. And I would also recommend that for the lighting, which um, is just kind of a down the road thing. Yeah. Um, and then and then a clarifying question as well. Just um, is the what is the signage mounting and um, it's already installed. So what is the material? Um, how is it attached? They had used the, the frame from the previous sign. I think there was a metal like an L metal frame on there already. So the previous sign was taken off and all they had to do was just remount the new one onto that exi existing frame. What's the material? I, I believe it's a mix of metal and wood. I think there's, it's mostly metal. I think there's like an L thing on both sides and they drilled the sign onto the frame. And I, I think she mentioned there might be some wooden pieces up there. I just don't know what part of the frame is wood. Okay, hey, yeah, I mean, I think my, my question is just about kind of the, the durability factor um, and, you know, the if it's like a vinyl or something on metal, I mean, the as long- The sign as itself is an aluminum sign with i think i believe a vinyl print over it okay great yeah mm -hmm. okay thank you yep yeah. okay um you i want to um kind of summarize because i agree with all of these comments from the the board members that um you should since we're kind of looking at the buttercup sign as a uh potentially temporary sign that you should look at from the sidewalk craft bakery to see if it's legible, you know, from 50 feet and then um, consider making that bolder. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. the font choice is lovely and it's, it's a really cute sign, but make, make sure that that's legible from the sidewalk. Okay. Painting the, the storm slash screen door, the, the yellow to match, I think um, would be a really smart idea. And um, getting a, a, a kind of a, a cleaner, simpler hours sign, it, it may be challenging. If you did a vinyl sign, it's hard to make changes to that. Where yeah. The kind of sign that you have now, I recognize that that offers the ability to update the hours as you go. But um, maybe there's something that is a little more sophisticated given the, the, the simple language. You know, yeah, I feel like as, as time goes on, you. yeah, as time goes on, um, my cousin will probably make make small adjustments, like you guys mentioned, to yeah. you know spruce up the space and make it more welcoming. I guess. Sure. Yeah. And the other thing that's new to us tonight is the neon sign, which I don't have any objection to. I think it's it doesn't it's not crowding the window or anything like that. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it. It's not turned on, obviously. Um, yeah, so not in this picture, not. but in the uh, previous one, we were able to see it. Yeah, so it's like a different design, but it's it takes up about the same amount of space in that the upper left corner of the window. All right. So you I guess kind of, you can kind of see the outline in the mirror, in the uh, window. Like it looks like corner. a cloud. It's like a, yeah, it's like a cloud shape neon sign. Any any board members have curiosity about that sign or objections or anything? No, oh, I, I have no objections. Okay. All right. So to summarize our I'm gonna make this oh Lindsay, sorry, go ahead. Okay. Um I do feel like just personally that it it does kind of detract from the elegance of the rest of the storefront. Um and so, you know, without seeing it on, it's a little hard to say for sure. If it's all white, I think it'll look pretty nice. But if it's green, which I think it was represented as, um, I don't know, it doesn't it doesn't quite jive for me. So again, something maybe to look at um, as you move forward. Mm -hmm. But I have no objection to it. I just think it could potentially be, um, there, there could be other options that might look a little 
more in keeping with the rest of the design. Yeah, the the colors on on the signs actually it's like a multicolored. Um, it's got uh more like pastel color mixtures. Yeah, so it's it's not the blue and green color scheme in the mock-up. Okay. So it's actually a kind of a cute cute sign that doesn't look like any other sign on the, on the on the streets. <laughs> All right. Does anybody feel like um, pulling together a uh, a proposal for us to vote on, or shall I do that for you? All right, I'll make a pass. Um, I'm gonna propose that this um, proposal be accepted with the following recommendations: that the storm door is painted buttercup yellow to match the other frames and that craft bakery may need to be larger or bolder if it's difficult to read from the street and that the hours sign should be a simpler cleaner design when it's time to review or when it's time to update that. Did I capture that for you well enough, Lindsay, that last bit? Okay, so that's my proposal. Anybody want to amend or second? I'll, I'll second. Thanks, Pat. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Say aye. aye. Okay, that's everyone. Thank you, you son. Thank you, guys. When will the bakery open? Uh, she would like to open on um, Friday. Awesome. I will be there. Yeah. So if, if anybody wants a copy of the menu, I could screen share it real quick. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably move on, but that's great. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Bye. Okay. So we're going to move on then to um, Jones Properties. And Prey Street. And who would like to represent that project? There's a bunch of you here tonight. Randy's the contractor. He's going to be the one installing him. So if you have any technical questions, he's probably the smartest one to. Um, All right. Um, <laughs> so, um, Randy, you are muted. So if you were, I, I heard you speaking before, I saw you speaking, but we couldn't hear you. Um, we usually ask, um, for somebody to walk us through the proposal. And if you have any images to share, you can do that, or I'm happy to share what you submitted to the DRB. But let me know. I think you have to explain to him how to unmute. <laughs> for Just me, go, go to your picture, put, put the thing over your picture, the uh, cursor, and then three dots at the top right-hand corner, press that. or the mute next to it, actually. There we go. Did there that we come in? There we go. We can OK. Hear you. Very good. Um, so basically, they, they just want to update some windows there at 15 Prey Street. And uh, we were going to enlarge them a bit. And also would like to add um, a small hip roof over the um, over the two windows. Mm -hmm. I had provided some uh, pictures to Jacinta. I don't. I'm not sure if I know how to upload those to the meeting. There yeah. they go. That's yeah. them. Yep. All right. Um... So here's the picture. Do you want to, can you walk us through it a little bit more? Sure. Detailed? Yeah, the the windows would be about 14. They wouldn't increase by any width and they would be about 14 inches uh, taller in height to the to take in a, a little bit bigger area there in the height. Um, and the roof structure is somewhat as we've drawn it there is just going on the brick and then up onto the building and it would also 
um, be preferable to have some accent lighting in there, you know, underneath to brighten it up a little bit there. Mm -hmm. You described um, when uh, lighting in the soffit. Soffit, correct, the, yeah. Underneath, so would it protrude at all or is it? Okay? No, it would be flush with the soffit mm -hmm. uh, underneath. It wouldn't protrude at all. Okay. And you said standing seam bronze on this? Yeah, it's typically what, what you see a lot of around town. Um, just the color that would, you know, match the windows um, uh, better and, the standing seam you know, usually has a nice New England look to it. Okay. And I think that the, the height is changing, but it's actually that you're keeping the, the top of the window at the existing height and then dropping yeah. it more. Yeah. And then what is the, the white material and will that remain? No, that will that will change the that's right the way it is right now is some white vinyl siding in there. But as you look at that, that would be either window or or bronze to match the window. There wouldn't be more than like eight or 10 inches left, I think below the window. And that would be all bronze. Okay. And then we see this detail. I have to rotate the screen. Yeah. Yeah. That basically just is an explanation of how we construct that. Does, is this the, the the bronze I see coming down on the angle? Yes. Will, yeah. will you cope this detail? Will you shape that detail, or is the bronze going to fold down over the the fascia there? What's going to happen? The the fascia will will be bronze bronze as well. Uh, there's a part of the component to the roof actually makes the roof clip over the fascia. Uh, you will. You know, you will see uh, some of the fascia there, but it'll all be bronze. And I did a cutaway view of that. And like, actually, as you look at it, the way we're looking at it now, that'll be hipped on the corners. Um, it's similar to oh, the, the spoke and um, Garcia's both have larger things, but it's it's similar in, in design to what, what they both have is basically just the hip roof going over around the mm -hmm. uh, the facade. All right. I mean, I, when I look at this detail and I'm concerned that we're going to see the end condition of a bunch nope. of two by sixes no, coming no, across, that, and I'm really certain that that shouldn't happen. <laughs> no, that will not happen. Okay. Um, okay. I guess maybe that drawing would have been better suited for the building inspector than the design review. So I apologize for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there anything else that we should know by way of uh, introduction to this project um, or should I open it up to the? Uh, just that they're, they're trying to get a, a little more natural light into this office space. And, and also the windows are, are in, in uh, need of replacement. They've, they're Fire. past their usefulness. So um, there needs to be something done there. Got it, okay. Our goal was to try to dress up the building. The building was built in the, started in the 1970s. We added more in the 80s and um, it didn't have a lot of character, not a lot of windows. And we felt that the tenants had always wanted more light. They wanted um, the ability to be able to have um, a little bit more um, displays if possible you know the, the the area is changing as you probably know it's it's becoming less office oriented mm -hmm. a little bit not retail but but kind of that in between kind of thing and we just hope to try to make it uh, more modern sure we hope to come back with different sections over time mm -hmm. try to change it to make it uh, you know I think something, not Newberry Street in Boston, but something that has a little character along the way. It It's basically one long box. Great. Well, oops. Thank you for um, that uh, description and walking us through. I'm going to uh, turn it over to members of the DRB uh, for comment uh, and clarifying questions. I see Lindsay's hand. Let's go there first. 
Hi, um, great to see the design proposals for this building and long-term vision for um, making some improvements. And I do have a couple clarifying questions. Um, do you have a material selected for the soffit underneath the new roof canopy? Yeah, we we were going to try to use a, a like a, a like a grooved uh, PVC type material, something that uh, maybe like a beadboard or something like that underneath, um, something that didn't require a lot of maintenance. Okay. Do you have a color in mind? Usually, do a soffit on on the lighter side, but I'm sure the Joneses would be flexible about that color. I think we were probably thinking white, but that's sort of plain that way. Okay. Um, so that's helpful to, to know. Um, and then the question about the, the narrative that's written out on the, um, the PDF that we saw, it said that the new openings protrude six inches from the face of the brick. Mm. I'm a little confused by that. Do you, do you mean is it's recessed or do you actually mean that it's coming out proud of the face of the building? Oh, uh, there was mention of, of having them come out uh, proud of the face of the building to give it a little more uh, depth there. And because um, it's not, it doesn't come into a walking area anyways. I know that was, um, that was discussed and that was something that I thought we'd like. Yeah. So is the window unit and are you changing the framing of the opening yeah. to allow for that? Yeah. But surprisingly, the window, when it was designed with the brick, had a, a could be a, a taller window. It's just framed in on the bottom with two by fours. And then um, so that when that window was replaced in the future, it could be just a, a bigger window flush. And we just felt that if we could protrude it out a little bit, it would give it a, a more, um, a better look on the street, a little bit of definition when you compare it to what we plan to do down the road each time coming you know, forth and trying to um, let you see it. But our goal is to try to move in that direction with a, a nicer looking building with a little bit of character that looks like you've been around a while. So I'm envisioning almost like a storefront sort of the start of that, yes. You know, we're looking down the road, realizing that um, the people who come to look at our spaces aren't just your typical offices and nonprofits anymore. They want more light. They want a little bit of visibility um, in their stores or, or offices. It's kind of moving in that direction. Um. So I... I'm just trying to envision this. And I, I mean, I do like the idea of having that um, bronze storefront aesthetic introduced and kind of contrasting that with the more historic brick and clabbered siding. Um, but the protrusion just feels, I'm, I'm, my mind is having, I'm challenged to think of an example in which I've seen that. Um, usually it's it's kind of set back from the face of the brick. I've seen a detail where, you know, you have like kind of a a fin or um, like a metal extrusion that kind of frames and, and comes out beyond the face of the brick. But having the whole unit come forward, um, I'm not sure. I, I think it would make, and I don't, I don't want to detour this too much, but it, it is a, it is a, it is an aesthetic or a, a design proposal that's, that's, semi-different it might be helpful to have some visuals as just an example if you've seen this done before oh i've seen it done many times it's, you know they used to refer to it as a box window is before in in older new england construction before people did many bays or bows they um you know would just build a window out like that the florence bank that's uh down on route nine that was taken down was was done like that um with all the windows on one side. Um, I certainly could find some pictures of how it's done. It's not, you know, it's, you know, five to six inches, whatever we put down there, it's, it, it doesn't really uh, stand out 
a lot away from the building, but you know, it's just a small, small amount. It gives uh, a little more depth in the sill and stuff inside as well. If people want to put plants or things like that there. Yeah, it is an interesting, I thank you for the reminder that that was happening, Lindsay. I, I, I remember when I was reviewing this before the, the meeting, I wondered how you were going to insulate it. Like, it's just a, it's an interesting proposal if the unit isn't prepared, like is the unit itself that deep or are you building little wing walls to support it? We, we build, you, we probably, and what I had talked with Jerry about doing there was, uh, you know, we just put a, a pressure treated two by 12 around the opening, but we, we aren't discounting the insulation. In fact, we usually put, uh, uh, you know, build it in a way that you can put three inches of rigid and then clad that with the bronze material on the outside. Uh, no, it's a, it's a very good question about the insulation, but we've done, we've done this several times and it, um, you know, it works out well and it, it's going to be super insulated when it's all done. Okay. Yeah, we've seen, I, the idea came originally from Lennox and also from Newbury Street where the stores had been bumped out just to give it a little definition. It's not a big space, but just enough to make it look a little different. Um, you, I'm, I'm trying to think of the stores in mind around town and I can't, unfortunately. I, and I did have some pictures, but I didn't bring anything. I, I didn't realize we were going to design review when we first came up with the idea. So we were a little behind the eight ball on that. I just want to follow up. So thank you for that description. And I can picture kind of the box that you're referring to. I do want to just also note on, I'm sure you'll, you know, make sure that it's all flashed. It's just a question of kind of how those materials meet the brick. Um, so yeah, I, probably more detailed questions than we need to get into, but just curious. Yeah, we'll make sure that that's all flashed correctly and sealed, sealed up right. And then part of the 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 beauty of having that roof over it is is to keep the water away from it but uh um that aside you know anything from driving rains or anything we'll we'll, mm -hmm. we'll address that um i'd love to hear from uh karen karen or pat if you have any questions or comments to share about this design proposal I, the questions I would ask have been asked, All right. and it's just a question of, of more explanation. And I'm sorry we don't have a visual of the design as it exists elsewhere. But I don't have any other questions. I, you know, I would I would suggest a, a, a thought is um, a bay window, kind of like a bay window, but instead of being three-sided, it would be one-sided with two sides on the end. Um, I guess it's probably a good way to, to describe it. Um, all right. So we had a couple of clarifying questions I didn't hear in our discussion, any proposed changes. So the question now is, oh, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. All right, I'm gonna go to Jacinta first and then. Um, is yeah, this no. an example of what you're looking for? <laughs> Not really, Jacinta. I think it's like, there's, there's a, if you were doing a search term, you might find box bay, but it's only protruding six inches. So there wouldn't be any mm. windows on the short sides. Okay. Um, Karen? Um, I, I, when I first, so am I muted or? No, uh, I can hear you. When I first saw it, I, I think it's kind of an improvement and I agree it makes it a little bit more interesting to have the window larger and stand out. Um, but like the rest of them, it's, I haven't seen it before, so it would it, it would be really lovely to get more of a description. But on the whole, I, I welcome the idea of getting more light in there, more natural light, and having the building have a little bit more interest by having something that comes out. 
Sure. Thank you. And Lindsay, you want to follow up? I just was curious if you have any plans for the front entry door. Is that also something that you're looking at replacing? Because it, uh, I'm not clear on what that material is currently um, and adjacent to the new kind of storefront aluminum clad um, aesthetic. I'm just curious about your thoughts on how the existing door will work with that. Jerry, yes, uh, I had thought about that. Um, uh, currently, it is a half door, if I'm not mistaken. Um, it is um, a situation where we, we're moving in a direction. The, the windows that we currently have are falling out. Literally, they've they've um, because they don't have a roof above them. Water's got in, in there, and it's started to come apart. So that's one reason we want the roof also to try to protect it. But also um, eventually there will be a different door there. Um, right now we are currently, we were gonna, I think we were just gonna leave it the way it was and then figure out at a later date what we wanted to do there. Um, if it, it down the road, we envision it becoming one unit instead of currently it's two um, and kind of planning for the future, our feeling is that and we're seeing that more stores, more offices, more uh, tenants really want more space um, than what we currently have. Um, so our feeling is that we'll eventually redo it to a um, either a solid door, I'm sorry, not solid, an open window door of some sort down the road. And right now it's it's really just an en entry area area um and then you can go to the right and go up to jones properties you go upstairs to jones properties or you go straight ahead into a tressa the hair salon um mm -hmm. so it's sort of a it's just a small little room okay keeps the leaves the leaves out the offices is there can i mean i'm not visualizing what we saw before, but is there is there actual material between the window opening and like siding or whatever is there currently and the door opening? Is there a structural wall there? There is. There is. It's it's brick. You know, it's a it's a very nice brick building. It just it has three openings, three windows on one side, three in the other, and a a door so it's not really like one big unit like you would see in a uh, a storefront it's really two windows and a, a solid door without a lot of um it's not fancy it's a basic door okay uh, yeah. the way it was built thank Ooh. you for pulling that back up so i would just say you know if the budget allows it might be it might be worth considering adding a door, you know, that's in kind with the storefront that just kind of give it a whole cohesive new face. Um, I think that would help a lot with creating the the impact that you're looking for. Um, it, it's hard to say without really knowing what that door looks like. There's not a lot of a resolution to the image, but um, it is something I think I would I would encourage, you know, considering if if it's if it's feasible. Sure. All right. I did see somebody pulled up a picture in and during the conversation that was yeah. that was definitely closer to what we're talking about. I think it did look like it had some um uh possibly some glass. Yeah, that's that's definitely uh more along the lines without the glass on the protruded part. I, if I'm looking at that correctly. Yeah, and you said only projecting six inches. Only right? six inches, but yeah. that is that that's closer to um, what we're talking about. Um, With a roof over it, and then on the bottom, it wouldn't have a window underneath it. No, or on a slab. Right, but a general idea. I think that you're right. It's a good, good idea of what we're thinking about. All right, folks, um, I think we have plied you for a lot of information and um, 
thank you for providing the you know, verbal descriptions of what we're not seeing in the in the in the pictures. Um, and again, I think I'm hearing kind of general consensus um, with now uh, one suggestion, and that is to um, replace the door in you know in, in the same language of the the new uh, windows, which I think is a great idea. Um, and yeah, I'm wondering if maybe Lindsay, do you want to put this uh, motion in order? <laughs> sure. Um, I propose that we approve um, the proposal with suggestions for um, considering the addition of a new entry door that's um, in kind with the new windows that are being proposed. Um, I don't think there's anything else. I don't think so. Okay. Okay. A second then? Second. I'll second. That. Great. Okay. So all those in favor um, proposed with recommendations? Aye. Um, great. That's everybody. Thank you, Jones Thank you. team, for coming. Thank you. Have a nice night. Thank you. You too. Have a lovely evening. Yeah. Thank hey. you. Thank you very much for your time. All right. And now we'll have the UMass team. Hi, Kuhn Riddle. Hi, Tony. Hello. All right. And um, Lindsay Schnarr has mentioned that she should recuse herself from voting on this particular proposal um, because now a conflict of interest. <laughs> uh, but Lindsay is is uh, still on the call and maybe could provide some clarifying information if necessary, but just won't won't vote on this on this particular proposal. But um, usually we uh, ask our proposers to walk us through the design and then we could have a conversation about it and then we'll make a vote. So would you like me to screen share on your behalf or can you do that? That would be great. Okay. Thank you. Um, so I'm Mallory Nurse. Hello, everybody. I'll be walking you through the presentation. We also have Tony and Elon here from the team. Feel free to jump in anytime, guys. <laughs> Thank you. How's that? That's great. I don't think that's the most up-to-date version of the presentation, though. This is what uh, was submitted to the DRB, so this is what I have. But if you have newer stuff and you I would do. like to share, okay. I, mean, I'll, I'll, I believe um, Perfect. Not, you're able to do that. So go right ahead. Okay. Okay. Can everyone see my screen? Yeah. Okay, great. So... This is uh, UMass downtown. It's a um, hub for UMass in the downtown Amherst area. Um, it's going to be used as um, a community space for hosting events and also have a retail component. So as you can see the signage proposed here, we're using the existing substrate that's already on the building and painting it in the UMass red. Um, as you can see here, that's the Pantone color that it will match. On top of that substrate will be acrylic mounted signage in white. Um, so the letters will be three quarters of an inch thick, um, acrylic mounted directly to the substrate. This is the approximate size of the signage. So it's about 17 square feet, which is under the maximum allowed 10%, uh, which would be 18 square feet of the total facade. This is the font um, used. I'm not going to try to pronounce it, so, <laughs> um, but you can see it's represented accurately here in the view. Um, and then we're also proposing to keep the existing lighting to remain for mm -hmm. consistency across the rest of the building. And so um, Uptown is right here and the lighting is consistent and straddles both sides. 
Do you have any questions about this? Do you want me to go to the next slide? Yeah, go to the next slide and then we'll, okay. we'll talk about the whole. Sounds good. Um, so the facade wraps around the building to the other side. And so here you're seeing um, the side as you walk towards the building from the side of North Pleasant. Um, and so we'll have the same painted substrate, same color to match the UMass Pantone, acrylic signage, um, white, three quarters of an inch thick, mounted directly onto the substrate. It, this sign is about uh, two square feet, which the max is six square feet, so we're fine on here. Uh, the existing lighting to remain. There's a light that's similar to this one that's right above here. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty much it, unless uh, Elon or Tony have anything to add. So any painting to the storefront itself? We are, yes. So um, it will be similar to the color shown because it's the existing color and the UMass color is very similar. So it's accurately represented. Okay. Okay. And then the, the, the door remains that kind of gray white like hard to pin that down it's like a stainless steel door so it's yeah, um, okay okay or no, aluminum okay, okay. excuse me yeah. aluminum mm -hmm. um so metal yeah all right great and then one more clarifying question from me and then i'll i'll <laughs> let the others talk um is the the relationship of the m the new umass m and then umass downtown is that defined in the kind of UMass uh, word mark metrics, that relationship between the, the line, the M, the line, and the next, the letter U? That, that is the case, Erica, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks, Tony. All right, um, anything else to add before I turn it over to DRB members? No, okay. Um, so, uh, Karen, Karen, Pat, uh, any comments or questions for the reviewers? Karen, please. Um, it's just the door, and I realize it's aluminum, but I was just wondering if there's a way, whether with materials, um, to to paint it so that it blends in with the overall color scheme. It's a anodized aluminum existing door. Um, and uh, it's consistent with all of the other doors in that okay. storefront. Oh, so you don't you don't run the length of it. You just you're in that section. Yeah, so it stops right here. Okay. That's where um the uptown grill is. Oh, oh, I I realize now where it is. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So I understand you're being consistent with the other stores. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. And um, Karen? Yes. So this sounds probably really picky, but I, that when you when you showed me the 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 signage on the side, I think it looks so nice to have this big M and have the UMass downtown just a bit smaller. Somehow aesthetically, it just seems nicer <laughs> to me. I don't know if anybody else agrees with it. Um, I know it's bold and you want to see it, but I wonder if you could reduce, if, if you agree with me that uh, if the UMass downtown could be just a little bit smaller, the whole thing just would be, again, more elegant, which... Karen, are you saying, are you suggesting that the UMass downtown on the primary facade gets smaller? Yes, on the primary. That, sure. that, yeah. that to me just seems a little... And I think it would be clearer to see too. When I look at this, it's just a lot of great big letters. Um, I, my preference, and this is just a suggestion, it's maybe you don't, you know, I just think it would look a lot better if you uh, experimented a little bit with downsizing those letters just a bit, mm -hmm. my opinion. I, we made a very similar comment to um, Amherst College when they were, doing their new signage um, down the way. And I do think it resulted in a nice, a, a really nice final result. Are, are we are we being um, recorded right now? 
Yes. I think so, yeah. We can make that recommendation and talk about that internally. I, I happen to agree with that. So um, so we, we, we can, you know, certainly go back and uh, talk about that here. Okay. Um, and I see um, Karen's hand again and then Pat. Oh, no, I was, I just wanted to say I agree with that. I think it would be more elegant. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a great suggestion. Patricia? Uh, also, the, I I had the same thoughts as Karen, and I, I think it would be a more elegant sign. And I guess my question that, that is a part of that is, are these letters consistent with the, the uh, size of the, of the signage on the on the rest of the building um, tenants. That's a good question. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to that. <laughs> um, looking to pull up an image. Um, I think that the Uptown Grill does have a similar size to the UMass downtown. Um, in terms of the height of the letters, are you able to pull up a sign? Miller? It's not um, accurate because it still has the other Amherst Burger sign. Like when you look on Google Maps, Google. yeah, Google Maps, yeah. And I can't. I'm on their Instagram right now, but they don't have any exterior photo. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I agree with my my colleagues. I think that that's. Um, but I think that it does. It's not a matter of making it the same small size as the the letters around the corner, where you have to stack them. I do think that a little bit smaller. But how to quantify that is is an open question at the moment for me. Um, Pat and uh, Karen, your hands are up, and I don't know if those are new comments or just residual. Let me know. I, Feel free. I, I it just just a reiteration that I do think that the UMass downtown should be less large, less bold. Mm -hmm. um, and and other other than that, um, th that that's the limit of my comment. Thank you. Um, I'd like to say less bold and then recenter the whole thing. Um, you know, kind of keep keeping the 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 extents centered as you are suggesting now, but as UMass downtown gets a little bit smaller that you recenter the whole thing. I think it's a clean sign, it's clear. Any other? <laughs> Lindsay can't help herself. <laughs> This is just a very simple comment. question, just clarifying the the, the picture because no one else asked it, but the, the other sign seems to have a, a darker frame and I'm thinking it's just because the image itself is darker, but it's not that the frame turns black or gray at the corner. It's just a darker image. Yeah. yeah. It's a cloudy day here or the sun is hiding. <laughs> That's what I figured. I just wanted yeah, to and I think too the, the angle because the thing that I saw when I first looked at that side sign was that the the kind of the maroon border at the bottom felt a little narrow, but I think that's just the angle of the photograph. Um, all right, Karen Blum, hand is up. Oh I just want to make sure that I'm not ignoring you. If you have a comment, <laughs> and um, so please, and then um, after Car Karen Winter. Karen, do you have a comment? Oh, um, yeah, I was just gonna say, I think if you play with this, it's pretty easy to probably play with this and find, and then look at the whole block and how it would harmonize with it. Um, it's it's such a nice, you know, bright red, such a nice clear sign. I think you could play with it and just see how you can make it a little bit more uh, beautiful. Uh, because everybody's going to know it. You, you don't have to shout those letters. Everybody's going to be able to read it very clearly. So just make it as as nice looking as you can, I would say. Right. Okay. Karen, do you want to um, take a, 
a crack at the at the motion to approve with our recommendations? Okay, I'll try. Okay, I I uh think we should approve this motion. Welcome this addition. Um, but we have the recommendation that the sign in the front that the lettering be reduced somewhat in sign um, in an effort to make it uh, as beautiful as possible. Can I just clarify that we're not, I don't think we're talking about the M. I think we're talking about the portion that's UMass downtown. Although the M, yeah. That's that's exactly. I was talking not about the M, but the M. When you look at it, it could also be a little bit smaller, and then there would be a little bit more red at the top and the bottom. It might also um, improve it and make it a little more elegant. Just just a tad. It's it's almost perfect. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not one that can make clear motion. So I, I, I say we approve this with the recommendation that the lettering in the front be um, somewhat reduced in size. And including the, including that's M, including wow. the M. And by somewhat reduced in size, we're just we're gonna we're clarifying clarifying your motion. Um, who it's I'm I'm trying hard because to to be to make a clear recommendation right like how how much are we asking of you I I think that it's um, the overall height of the sign thirteen feet eleven inches or thirteen one F foot fifteen three inches, inches fifteen, 15 inches, inches height yeah. so that suggests that the the, the letters are eight. Um, in terms of these letters, yeah, the UMass. Yeah, so this is about fifteen. So that's um, probably like twelve. Yeah. Okay. It's not oh. going to be much. It's like two inches. Yeah. So I mean, we'll definitely keep it readable. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But I think if I'm hearing correctly, the overall goal is just to have more space around it. Yeah. Um, yep. Right. And I'm thinking, you know, breathing room. you could, it, it remains centered on the, on the vertical space. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's probably the strategy of Uptown Grill as well. So if all of the signage on this facade remains centered on the vertical space, I think we're good. Okay. That is the world's longest motion. Um <laughs> So Karen, Karen, Karen made a motion that we proposed to reduce the, the 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 size of all the lettering on just this front facade. Is there a second? I second it. Okay, great. All those in favor, say aye, please. Aye, aye. That's everybody. Lindsay is abstaining. Great, thank you guys. Thank yeah, you. Thanks. Thank you all. Have thank a great you. night. Appreciate thank you. you. Looks great. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, and just checking, uh, it looks like there are six people, six participants. That's all of us. So no members of the public that are waiting to comment. That's correct. Um, okay. I have a, a question. Mm -hmm. um, and I apologize. I am managing two very young children and a very tight time frame of my availability this evening. Um, so I'm just, I'm wondering if we could switch the order from, because I wasn't present for the meeting um, that needs review of minutes. Sure. Um, I do, I, I do want to just make a comment to offer some contribution toward the um, design standards language that we discussed um, Erica, do you have a copy of the of the um, revised standards that you could pull up, please? We are ready to go. Hmm. 
Does this look familiar? Yes. So, um, so I'm, I've been, I've been percolating on this and I know that we, um, we need some language as I suggested to define the, the meaning or the intent of the word compatible, um, because it shows up at almost every, um, at almost every point here. Mm -hmm. And, um, I do have, I do have a, an ongoing sort of, um, investigation. This is actually like a really, <laughs> this is actually a really, um, thoroughly researched and discussed, um, term that, um, has, has some actual basis, um, in, in the architectural, uh, community. So I do feel that there is something, um, substantial here that we can lean on in terms of what does compatible actually mean. Um, and essentially what I've derived in the simplest in of terms is that it doesn't conflict. It doesn't, it doesn't propose a conflict. Um, it does not propose that it replicates um, or that it intends to be one of the following three. One is replicating, the other is um, completely diverging from. Um, I'll just stick to those two. And and so I think if we're if we're avoiding those two extremes and we're looking at this as as not intentionally being something that um, meets one of those other one of those two extremes or some or somewhere in in the middle but is is more um, focused on not proposing something that conflicts with the um these elements that we're identifying um so I think it could get a little more specific than that but I do think that just as a very simple kind of um clarifying, reference that that could be helpful um, because the reason I brought this up <laughs> brought this upon myself and all of you um, was because I my concern is simply that um, it could be interpreted as meaning a number of different things that aren't really what our intention is um, mm -hmm. or it could just feel too vague to really be able to define so um, so in terms of that idea of of not not posing a conflict um, and not intending to replicate or or depart from intentionally um, the surrounding buildings. How do we feel about that? I, I think we decided that there needed to be some some uh, definition of compatible. And um, I, I'm wondering if rather than putting more words in our, our standards, that we asterisk the word compatible and provide a definition, an asterisk definition at the end. I agree. I think that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I I am I think um, you know in terms of how we define that is, you know, and I'm not looking to create like a Webster definition, but kind of more in terms of what is the intent. Um, so, this is just a starting point of what that definition could be, and I like the idea of having an asterisk that could just um, kind of clarify that. Um, is there? I'm curious from the group if there's an interest in being more specific than the language that um, is being shown here by Erica. Yeah, I'm trying to like take your words and like make it into a something succinct um, yeah. because then you know do are we opening the door to having to define conflict right like <laughs> by in so it this being subjective when we say um it doesn't present a conflict is that something that we can is that something that we can define 
or is it then referencing each of these subcategories? It doesn't prevent a conflict in height. It doesn't prevent a conflict in um, materiality. It doesn't, you know what I mean? Like I, I defining what it isn't um, it may be as challenging to defining what it is. Mm -hmm. I feel Erica, you make you make a very good point because the more language we use, the more defining may be necessary mm -hmm. to, to make it operative. Um, and and this review board exists as in as it does with the current members, and it's going to be open to interpretation in the future. And so you know, you you really do make a good point. If we put add more words, do we have to define those? Um, I also wanted to add that it's it's really relative. Um, and those words get perhaps defined when you see the context in which a building is presented, that maybe it's clearer within that context. Because mm -hmm. whether you're talking about conflict or um, compatibility, they really are relative terms. Definitely. Yeah. Lindsay, say more about the, the the research that you've that you've done and the the ways that um, I mean, because we're really relying in the in the text of this um, on compatibility to say all of those things for us. That the the implication is that um, the height yeah. is um, similar. Is that a word that we want to use uh, in relation to in relation to? Yeah, like. It, it is defining, as I, I'm hearing um, Karen's comment, like it is it is relational. It is about context and how this all sits within the context at different scales, right? The context of the neighborhood, the context of the immediate neighbor, the context of the building facade itself, mm -hmm. context of the sidewalk. I think my interest is certainly not to muddy this and not to um, create more confusion at any level really it's just to clarify that it doesn't mean to match mm -hmm. um, and, mm -hmm. and I think that you know I think my point of the research is simply to say that this is a term that has some ground um, that it does not mean that and so I think using it is appropriate yeah. and does have some basis in the intention of being um, a word that's being used to create a, a certain um, intention of harmo harmonious relationship mm -hmm. um, with its context. Um, and so I don't know that it needs to go much further than that. I, I do kind of agree that like the more we throw at it, they might be the more we can kind of like pick apart. Um, but I, but I guess primarily just to say that I think that's a very, you know, after looking into the, the term, it does seem that it's the, it's the best word for what we're aiming to achieve um, and perhaps it's worth adding some kind of footnote that just kind of summarizes this intent behind it. Um, mm -hmm, and I mm -hmm. can work on um, kind of taking those notes that you just jotted down, Erica, and kind of creating a more complete statement. And and we can look at it next time and just decide if it's worth including or if it's if it's not. I'm, if I may, um, please I'm going back to Karen's comment about context. And I'm wondering, I'm looking at the architectural features details because that's the one that's right in front of me. But um, these, these it, where it says um, in the downtown business districts, these details, details should be compatible in the context with their surroundings. Mm -hmm. Everywhere that we have compatible to add in the context of, in this instance, their surroundings, um, we might not need to say a whole lot more. Um, yeah, I, I'm open to that. And um, 
I don't know. To, to me, it, it's it's inherent in the, in the language that's already there that we're talking about in the context, but perhaps that's not as um, clear to others. Um, but I, but I do think it's relevant in terms of that is what we mean. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Karen? I wonder if there's an advantage to having it vague. Mm -hmm. um, and, and an example, and this may be minor, is there may be at times where we do want it to be a repetition of what is being represented in that context. In other words, um, I wonder if trying to define it more will create some challenges down the road. Good. I see the value in. I see the value in clarifying that we don't necessarily mean it to be either extreme. We're we're, we're trying to avoid things that may feel like um, harsh uh, detours from the, 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 the language of the architecture in town while we're also not asking to replicate, you know, the kind of um, historical buildings that are behind us and that by so by saying compatible one could say it must replicate right that's one definition of that term and I actually appreciate the clarification that we're trying to strike a middle ground what you're saying um yeah. but it does I I hear you and I think that um given that so much of this is interpretive anyways like <laughs> we may just be redefining the sandbox that we're already sitting in um or perhaps making it clearer for the the next round of drb members i um i really apologize but i do have to go um so i i'm gonna leave it <laughs> uh -huh. then, I mean, we can just come back next time and see how we're feeling or if you guys want to continue talking and you know decide whatever the group consciences. All right. Thanks, Lindsay. Thank you for bringing all of that um, research to the conversation tonight. And I think um, what we what we may need to do is um, continue to workshop it. So I'll keep the conversation open this evening and then, but I'm guessing that we're not going to vote on any approve, you know, approve any language this evening, but I'm going to ask us all to, and while you're still here, Lindsay, if I could keep you for just one more minute to um, let's make it a goal at our next meeting to approve these uh, updates to the DRB standards. And so, you know, read with a fine tooth comb and let's bring our kind of final changes to bear. What I can do is um, take a stab at <laughs> this kind of opening statement or footnote statement. Um, and then, you know, we can decide to uh, uh, jettison it, uh, revise it or, or approve it at the next, at the next meeting along with any other changes that you might have to the to the body of the text. Mm -hmm. That sounds good. Thank you. So we can get out our red pens and, <laughs> okay, great. Lucy, thank you, it was helpful. Yeah, and I, I will also add that um, if there's, you know, some documented um, research or information that I felt that I feel may be supportive in our clarifying um for next time i'll i'll try to circulate that yeah thank you okay thank you everyone Great. thanks Have a nice bye day. lindsay bye thank you eric i know you you sent us this copy of the revised version but is it possible that it can be sent again just so it stands out from what it was buried in before with your yeah. with like mine <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'll look for it and resend it. Thanks, Jacinta. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, I had a question about yeah. that 
Um, I know we thought about should versus shall. Oh, right. And I was wondering where we are with that, how people are thinking about that. We determine that one is stronger than the other. Yes, shall. That's shall. Yeah. Right. And I'm wondering if we need the, to use the stronger one. That I I was wondering that too. Great. Yeah. Saying, this is what we would like to see accomplished. Right. It, Make it, a really good point. Simply, we're not simply suggesting, but we're asking for that to be a significant consideration. Yeah. Yeah, should sounds more like a suggestion. You should do this. Yeah. But that's not what we're saying. That's right. Um, that's right. Yeah. So shoulds shift to shalls. Yeah. Define or propose a definition of compatibility. Are there any other kind of like open areas of question that we should workshop in the next month? I, I honestly think that this draft is is really very, very, very solid. Mm -hmm. I agree. All right. Well, I'll make those changes. I'll give them off to Jacinta and then she can circulate. I don't know that I'll get it done tomorrow, but I will attempt to do it very soon. Thank you. Okay. Grand. Um, all right. So why don't we close that portion of the conversation? and move on to approval of meeting minutes from the last meeting. Uh, let's see if I can get that to go share. So here we heard that whoop, first conversation with, sorry, it's hard to scroll when I get to the page end. First conversation with Buttercup Bakery. And then we heard, uh, oh, Jones didn't show up. And then we talked about Graphite Studios, the architecture firm. And then the last one was the high school track. Mm -hmm. And that was it. And those are the minutes of October 21st. Anybody need to see any part of that again? No. no. <laughs> motion to approve. I make a motion to approve the minutes as read. Thank you, Cara, in a second. 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 <laughs> okay, all those in favor? Hi. Hi. That's everyone. Thank you. Um, okay. I believe that we have made it through our agenda. Um, although I am wondering if anybody has been able to attend meetings of the downtown standards committee. I know, um, Karen, you were attending some of those. Did you I was attending and I'm, unfortunately, I missed the last one, oh, my. Uh, which is a real shame. There's one more. But in the one that I did attend, I was very impressed with some mock-ups that they made uh, of East Pleasant Street, particularly the area by Triangle Street, filling in behind those where, where the, the D.H. Jones building is. And there, uh, they had to me, a wonderful idea of putting a parking garage in there, behind there, 
um, five stories or so parking garage where you could put a grocery store, my big hope, on the first floor. And you could have alleyways on the side so you could have more shops in there and get a kind of a, mm -hmm. a little maze thing. That that was very impressive, I thought, that idea. That's great. I'm glad you were able to go to that. I wasn't able to. I went to one online meeting recently that um, I don't know if anybody was able to do the survey that they that Dunson and Flinker sent around. Great. The the strategy that they used there where they showed a number of facades and then you, you know, had to, to weigh in on whether this or that was working. Um, they took that approach and and showed the group of people uh, images of uh, various downtown buildings and then asked what did we think uh, of them and with regards to say windows uh, or or materials or you know what do you like what don't you like and I thought the conversation was really rich and that they they heard a lot of uh, interesting thoughts so how they collect all of that is going to be hard there is yeah there is one more meeting of the working group um that I just got an email today, got moved to a new date. Oh, oh, I'm not sure I got that email. Mm -hmm. um, I asked them, they, they always send a reminder of the meeting at about noon and the meeting is at six. And so I send an email saying yeah. it would be helpful to get it the day before because I'm not one of those people that has their computer on that much. Right. So I, I'm hoping- Scrape workshop has been rescheduled to Monday, December 9th. Okay. 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. No event on November 21st. Yeah, I'll put it on the calendar. Yeah. So if anybody can attend, these are winding down the, the public meeting portions of, of their work. So um, if you want a chance to attend, that might be one you want to keep your eye on. It really, it's really interesting to see how they do it. It's kind of amazing how they bring these divergent ideas together. And I think it's pretty productive. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, any other updates from the historical commission or planning board that the DRB should be aware of? Not, not specifically that hasn't been publicly acknowledged and has stated okay. as happening or to happen in the future. Right. Okay. Well, great. I say we adjourn. Say we adjourn. We'll see you next week or next month. Sorry, next month. So do we December December sixteenth? I'm you. sorry, sixth. Wait, December hold on. <laughs> I'm all over the place. Sixteenth. It's December sixteenth. That's the third Monday in December. Right. At right. five p.m. Hey, thank you all. Yeah, thanks everybody. Have a lovely evening. Thanks for your Thank thoughtful you. comments tonight. Yeah, thanks. Good night. Bye. Good night.